prototypes are actually unique to JavaScript. JavaScript works with objects in a very specific way that other languages don't necessarily use. But what are prototypes? Well, prototypes are just shared objects. They're objects that have properties and methods that can be accessed via a range of different objects. And it's all down to how that object is constructed. So let's first of all take a look at a constructor. We have an Apple constructor constructing Apple objects with the color and the weight, but also you can have methods in there such as eat and throw. So we have a constructor function that will generate our Apple objects and each instance is unique to itself. We have the color and the weight. However, there are some members, meaning some properties or methods that are not unique to this object. For example, eat and throw. Well, you can eat and throw every one of those apples and it's not a unique thing. Verbs aren't unique in that sense, just like we have cars with different color, styles and makers. But what you also have is the verb drive. And drive is not unique to any particular car, it's just a verb that we have for that particular category of object. So, in lieu of that fact, what we actually need to do is use a prototype object here, a shared object for shared members. Our Apple objects can have a prototype object associated with it, with the eat and the throw methods. They're not unique to each of those Apple objects, so there's no point having a copy of the eat and throw methods for each object. We're just wasting memory here. We're adding additional copies when we don't really need to do that. We don't need it on the instance level. So what is the instance level? When you have an instance of something such as the constructor is the blueprint for an object and an instance is a copy of that object. So when we run that function, it returns an object. That is an instance, it's a copy. And on the instance level, it needs to be unique. You need to be able to identify this object from other objects, its properties and so forth. You may even have unique methods, but typically you don't find that. So, we want to now attach a prototype object to our constructor. And what this does is when we attach this prototype object, we are in fact defining a shared object. So now all of our Apple objects on the instance level for each copy has its own properties and potentially unique methods. So everything that's unique to that object is on the instance level. Each copy has its own uniqueness but eat and throw are not unique to any one particular apple. So we can put that in the prototype. And then what can happen is when I access any one of those objects, either apple one, apple two, or apple three, I can then ask it to access and invoke, let's say the eat method. What will happen is these objects are now linked together. So we have one copy of the eat and throw methods, but when I access one of those objects, such as apple one, two, or three, and I ask it for the eat method, it will look at those objects and it will say, well, I can't see that symbol name. Don't forget a symbol name is just a memory pointer. And so we have a memory pointer here that doesn't exist in apple one. So what JavaScript does is it automatically searches the prototype chain. This is a chain of objects. It's just a link of objects. And every one of those Apple objects is linked to that prototype object. And it will look down this chain and it will find for every single one of those Apple objects, that symbol name and the prototype and we can invoke it. So now I just have one eat method and one throw method in memory. And everything that's unique is on the instance level. Everything that needs to be duplicated is duplicated. And everything that doesn't need to be duplicated, such as eat and throw, well, they just stay in one place and we just have one copy. This saves a lot of memory and it's very important for larger scale applications. For example, jQuery and lots of other popular JavaScript libraries use the prototype to make sure that they only have one copy of the verb of the subroutine and so forth. And they can have lots of instance objects, such as each Apple object, each copy, and it's unique to itself. 
So prototypes are objects and they're shareable objects. They share their properties and their methods so that you can access those members via the instances that were created. That's all it is. Now, one final thing. What about this? That word is so important. This is all based on context. And as I have said before, it is all about how it is invoked. So just take, for example, Apple One. I go grab an Apple One. That is an instance of the Apple constructor. That's what was created from it. And it's going to be linked up automatically with the prototype object associated with the Apple object. And I'm going to ask it to invoke the eat method. And the eat method is going to have a this keyword reference. Well, you need to look at how it was invoked to understand the context of this. We need to know what this is pointing to. So we know that it was invoked from the Apple One object. That's where we use the member access operator. And we said Apple One access the eat method and invoke it from that object. So we now know that when we use the this keyword in a prototype object, it's not just going to point to the prototype object. It's actually going to point to the object in which the call was made, which is Apple One. So you can think about the this keyword going back up the chain. It points to the very first object that invoked that particular function call. So if I was to use the this keyword in the prototype object, it points back to the initial instance that invoked it. And that is why we use prototype. And that's why it's so unique and special in JavaScript. And it actually does save a lot of memory.